All right, fuck it. Hey, 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 what up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Ask Akira. It's Sunday. Sunday, September 15th, 2019. Wow. Very frequently what I'm doing as a therapist is helping people have a life that would work. You know, and you can parameterize that. What do you need? How about some friends? How about an intimate relationship with someone that you can trust that maybe has a future? That'd be good. How about a career that puts you in a dominance hierarchy somewhere so at least you've got some possibility of rising, some possibility of stabilizing yourself, and a schedule and a routine because no one can live without a routine. You just forget that. If you guys don't have a routine, I would recommend, like, you get one going because you cannot be mentally healthy without a routine. You need to pick a time to get up, whatever time you want, but pick one and stick to it, because otherwise you dysregulate your circadian rhythms, they regulate your mood, and eat something in the morning. I had lots of clients who've had anxiety disorders. I had one client who was literally starving. Very smart girl. There was very little that she liked. She kind of tried to subsist on like half a cup of rice a day. She came to me and said, I have no energy. I come home, all I want to do is watch the same movie over and over. Is that weird? And I thought, well, it depends on how hard you work. You know, it's a little weird, but whatever. You need to regulate your use of drugs and alcohol, most particularly alcohol, because that does in a lot of people. Um, you need a family, like the family you have, your parents and all that, be nice if you all got along, you could work on that, that's a good thing to work on, and then, you know, you probably need children at some point. And that's life. And that's life. That's what life is. Human beings have a nature. There's things we need. And that's life. That's what life is. Human beings have a nature. There's things we need. Yeah, what up? What up? Welcome to Ask Akira. That was a little preview from a record that's coming out a week on Friday. It's coming out a week on Friday. It's uh, it's in the distribution system. It's all, it's all, it's all done. It's all signed off on. It's all approved. It's all ready to go. It's called JBP Wave Father. Father, ladies and gentlemen. JBP Wave Father. And uh, it's a uh, powerful concept album uh, about that. Let me turn myself off. I could hear myself coming back there. Anyway, yeah, so more news on that upcoming. We'll drop a single next week. Yes, we will. We will drop a single next week. Yeah, how about that? How's everybody doing out there? Where is everybody? We need to know where everybody is because, uh, you know, that's how we get down. It's important for us to know where everybody is. Uh, special thank you this week to Caroline, who drew the image on the thumbnail, which is a wonderful image. Uh, if you're not looking at the thumbnail, if you're listening to this on a podcasting device, it's a beautiful image of, of my lovely head as a bust, as a Greek bust. And, Caroline drew it because she was listening to an Ask Akira stream in which I said something about how I'd ended up looking like a Greek bust accidentally. So she drew me as one. And it looks really, really cool. I think I might, I don't know, I'm thinking about maybe I'll make it my avatar or something. I really like it. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Boom. Boom. And uh, yeah. So that's great. It's very nice to have good artwork. You know, having good artwork is, is just one of the one of the beautiful things in life. It's a beautiful thing in life, good artwork. Uh, anyway, yeah, how is everybody? I've been on holiday. How about that? Uh, that's my major bombshell for this week. Uh, Hercules and Charlotte and I, that's my wife and son, have never been on a holiday. Never been on holiday. Actually never been on holiday. And um, so we went on holiday this week. We took two days off. And we went to San Barbara, I think it was, and we slept in a tent. 
and it was it was very lovely. Uh, that skunks were trying to get into our tent. Goddamn skunks! And there were squirrels running around the place, and uh, raccoons, raccoons, oh my God! And uh, yeah, it was kind of fitting, what with having just completed this JBP record, that uh, I got burnt to a crisp and looked like a lobster. So I went full blown British person in the sun and uh, yo, you should see me like, I had to turn the saturation down on this video because it was just, just lava, lava. I'm out here looking like Satan himself and uh, that's a beautiful thing. So yeah, I was uh, slightly, I was like shit, if I go away for a couple of days, will I, will I fall out of the zone? But then, you know, I, I still did some work. <laughs> I've got this, uh, if you if you see my Instagram, uh, my major I love living in the future moment this week came when I got this uh, foldable Bluetooth keyboard that folds down so small that it fits in my Meaning Wave bum bag. And I can just pull it out, whip it out, and uh, fold it out like a, like a transformer and turn my phone into a laptop. My, and I can suddenly type with speed and precision. So I was able to uh, keep up with YouTube comments and your, your DMs and messages and things like that pretty well. So uh, yeah, and I was able to do some good thinking out there in the, out there in the wilderness underneath the stars. You're like, oh, look at all these stars. You can see all the stars out there in nature. It's a beautiful thing. And I was able to do some thinking and clarifying and I got some clarity. I asked, I asked God for some, uh, not for some wishes, for some, some questions and and I've got some answers, so we'll be, re we'll be revealing those over the coming weeks as the, uh, as the new phase unrolls. Hey, what happened? Oh, wait, I closed my laptop lid. I got rid of my sound effects. That was stupid of me. Anyway, um, yeah, what's going on with you guys? I hope everybody's well. Uh, oh, Caroline, who drew the, uh, drew the sick picture, is in the chat. She says her connection cut out just there. But you caught the end of that. You were. It was really fun to do. Steak knife. <laughs> well, thank you. It was a beautiful picture. You nailed it. It was great. Um, yeah. Where is everybody? Someone's in Ireland. Someone's in New Zealand. Uh, the chat is coming through s sporadically. I don't know if the... Uh, I don't know what's going on. Whatever. I don't know if we've got bad connections today or something. Who knows? What I find interesting is the uh, streaming connection for doing the talking streams always seems to have issues, but when I do the uh, DJ streams, not so much. Anyway, speaking of which, it's our DJ stream tonight, so there'll be a live set tonight. We'll be broadcasting a live set from, from here in Don Towers. So that's exciting. Uh, Doug Bourbon says, any potential for more Jones Wave? Jones Wave, I wonder who you're referring to more oh you don't mean you don't mean uh, everyone's favorite tip of the spear do you maybe you do who knows anyway um 66 chapa qualified for jiu-jitsu national championships in tulsa oklahoma on december 15th hey yo proud of you nice one good work good work that's wonderful um <laughs> 66 chapters out in Austin, Texas. God bless you. Shout out to Texas. Snacks and Comics is in the building. And I uh, got a lot of comics today at the convention in New Hampshire. Well, that's a wonderful thing. DMT Elf Island, presumably an island, says, Me and my friends fell in love with your music. It's good to see you and you're a real person. We'll send cash soon with love. Yo, well, there you go. That, what, a, what a wonderful thing. Thank you very much. I am a real person. Uh, I am a real Greek bust. In flesh made flesh. I'm a real Greek bust made flesh. Uh, yeah, you simply the best. And third place is heading home from Ice Tuckney Springs. I don't know what that is, but it sounds beautiful. And uh, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. If someone's in New York, Adam's in New York City. Just got off work and the notification popped up. Hey, the notification pops up. Well, if you've got a notification, that's a wonderful thing. Hercules! Hercules, that is doing a broadcast. Please keep your emotions in check. 
Hercules is playing Minecraft. Uh, he got he's got into the modding scene. Hercules age six is into the modding scene. He's very very excited. He got uh, an Avengers mod which turned creepers into the Hulk or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's very emotional. Minecraft, I found. Sixty six chapter. Clean my room to confront the dragon today. Good, good. Caroline wanted to ask about June Wave 2. Is that happening? Litany Against Fear is one of my favorites. Yes, June Wave 2 is happening. June Wave 2 is happening. Uh, Comic Book Girl 19 is... Uh, we're going deeper on this one. We're going deeper in the song structure thing. So Comic Book Girl is putting to, is doing some quite serious research, rereading all the books, finding passages about certain things that connect to other things, and then we're going to connect those disparate passages to make individual songs and bring those themes together. So, yeah. 66 Chapa says, I notice a lot of JVP singles have come from Genesis. I know, well, all it is is I've been uh, making videos for individual songs from the albums uh, recently. Semi-recently? I mean, increasingly over the past year. And now we're at this stage where we're releasing like three or four individual music videos every week. And uh, the goal is to get every single track its own video, so that's what we're working towards. But we did all of the Genesis ones. We just did all of those in sequence, because I kind of had a theme for those. They were all sort of uh, Disney visual related, I believe it was. So yeah, but you know, we, we're trying to do everything. So if you've got songs that you want to see music videos for, um, individual track uploads, then let me know. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to get those done. We'll try to get those done. Roberto says vinyl. Yeah, lots of people have been asking for vinyl, so that is definitely something we're looking into. Um, let me know what record you would like to see on vinyl the most, because I think what we're going to do is do one first to kind of test it out and see how that goes, and then um, and then do do more if it, if it works out. But uh, you know, I would just like to have it for myself. For myself, definitely would, definitely would. Um, yeah. Anyway, we need to do the international high five because this is an international broadcast and we're an international community. So it's time for that. I would like you to um, position yourself in such a fashion that you can aim a good, powerful high five at, this, at your screen. And if you're listening on a mobile phone device, just high five the air. Uh, all right. A three, a two, a one. Yeah. Good, good, that felt good. That felt good. Roberto Pacquiao says, June wave or what's wave? I don't understand the question. I mean, are the two mutually exclusive? Is this a preference question? Is this a, I do wonder. Anyway, um, both. I would say both. I would definitely say both. Both, and uh, maybe both at once, if you're feeling particularly enlightened. Uh, Jaden Hensley says Gary V wave yeah well you might have noticed we dropped a new Gary V track on the channel this week we dropped a new Gary V track on the channel and uh, if you haven't heard that yet go check it out it's a banger it's a very beautiful record and uh, yeah I've, I've made a whole album a whole album is, is completed and done and uh, that will be with you as soon as possible as soon as we can get all everything together for that but yeah the record's done it's dope and um, I might drop another I'm going to start leaking preview tracks via the Patreon and Subscribe Star and ThinkSpot ThinkSpot is kicking off shortly and uh, so yeah we're going to be on ThinkSpot doing cool stuff we're going to be doing some exclusive things on ThinkSpot but uh, I'll let you know about that next week I believe next week everything's being re being announced with that but ThinkSpot is the social media platform that Jordan Peterson's doing. So yeah, the wave is going to be present there and we're going to be doing some cool stuff. But yeah, I'm thinking of like dropping a few tracks on the Patreon and subscribe star and stuff ahead of album releases. Just to say thank you to people who support because it's a really amazing thing and I'm very grateful. Uh, my studio just got a significant upgrade in the form of two little speakers called mix cubes if you've seen my instagram i did a little i showed how they work they basically sound dreadful right they sound really shit 
But this is good because most people are listening to music on devices that are not the best. People are listening on phones or laptops or computer speakers or TV speakers, whatever it is. You know, so these, these speakers mimic that kind of experience. So when you mix on those, you're like, oh, damn, things that I thought sounded great on my really nice speakers, you can't really hear those on the crappy speakers. So then you mix in such a fashion that everything's clear on the crappy speakers. So this new record is the first record I've mixed like that. And it's way better. It's just a way better mix. Um, a way better mix. So yeah, so thanks to everyone. So yeah, thanks to everyone who's supporting. Because all the money from people who, who donate on Patreon and subscribe to or send PayPal donations goes into like making music, the making music systems that we have and goes into making that better, making that more efficient and making that whole thing more productive. So thank you. You are helping in a big way, in a major way. Caroline says, oh, you think they meant June Wave or What's Wave for vinyl? Yeah, maybe. All of those things would be good on vinyl. They would be good on vinyl. Maybe we should have a vote. Maybe we'll do that on the community tab or something. DMT Elf Island, we appreciate your richness of mind. Well, I appreciate you and your heart and brain emoji that you dropped. And I appreciate all of you who suffer through the sporadic streaming quality we've been getting lately. You are the real heroes. Um, let's answer some questions that were submitted. Shouts out to Sir Peppers, who puts all these questions together. Oh, the first thing we have here from the Autist Artist via the Discord. Join the Akira the Dawn Discord if you haven't. It's great. The link is in the video description or the podcast description. It says, I don't have many questions, but I do consistently feel the need to appreciate what you do, Akira the Dawn. And although I'm sure you recognize to some degrees the profound impact you're currently having on multiple generations, but the long-term effects of your beautiful artistic expression is literally rippling, rippling through time and space. And like the individuals you utilize and actually and symbolically you are constantly lighting and stoking the internal flame of truth and true passions and purpose i can only speak for myself but to acknowledge how much your work has impacted my life only means it's exponentially impacting those that come into contact with your beautiful creation of these priceless meaning waves and the ripples and waves of positivity and emanating from your work is appreciated even by those who don't have direct contact with your work. I know firsthand it's helped everyone in contact with me, if only vicariously. I can't ever thank you enough, but I promise many recognize your essence, even if only subconsciously. Keep up the amazing work and never lose that profound drive, because it's literally a gift to all of humanity. Hey! Well, shit, you're right, that's not a question. But it's a beautiful thing to read, and I'm very grateful to everyone. Uh, who allows me to be of use in their life and allows uh, us over here at the uh, Meaning HQ. It's good to know that your sacrifices are worthwhile. And it really is about... Uh, yeah, you might not... I mean, that's basically that's how you change the world, right? That's how you change the world. One person at a time and then you having a positive effect on those around you, and therefore that effect you've had on those around you resonates and ripples into their lives, and then out through their lives into the lives of others, and so on and so forth. And that's how the butterfly flapping its wings becomes a tsunami. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. Gabby Lantis says, Akira, if your past self were to encounter the current form of Akira slash meaning wave, how would he react? Get after it? or become a huge fan? Or could you not get after it and become a huge fan? I think young me would think this stuff was awesome. I think he'd think it was amazing. I think he'd find it useful. And I think it would um, have really helped young Don become sort of uh, realized, more realized way, way quicker. If young me had had access to this stuff, oh my goodness. What a conundrum. What a conundrum. But yeah, I do think young me would, would love it. Young me wouldn't necessarily instantly agree with all the stuff, but I think young me would find it 
powerful and useful and dope. Because it's powerful and useful and dope, and I always have good taste, if nothing else. If nothing else, I always have good taste. You're a node in the network, says 66 Chapter, and 66 Chapter is correct. 66 Chapter is entirely correct. Uh, Instagram, we've got some questions from Instagram. Mine Love says, What's the story that turned you to inspirational speeches, and why did you turn them into songs and bless our ears? Thank you. Why? Why? Why indeed? You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for a long time. I recently remastered a track in which I sampled Jack Kirby talking about uh, his inspirations. And Jack Kirby's the guy who invented the Marvel Universe. Stanley often gets the credit, and Stanley certainly did a lot. Uh, Jack Kirby, a lot of the characters you know, they just came out of Jack Kirby's mind. And he drew them all down, and then Stanley kind of added speech to some of them after the fact. Certainly, that was the case with Galactus and Silver Surfer and the New Gods and stuff. Jack Kirby was just a working class guy from Brooklyn who who fought in the Second World War. Was it the Vietnam War? I, think it was, I don't know. Uh, I think it was the Second World War. And uh, drew comics, and he wanted to make sales, you know, and he wanted to support his family and sell comics and uh, he, he created all this incredible stuff he was like a conduit for the cosmos so much incredible stuff just poured through that man into the world and uh, I did I had a mixtape called uh, Superhero Music that's what it was it was called Superhero Music did it about a decade ago and that had a track on it that was just Jack Kirby I just sampled Jack Kirby Talking about how he created Galactus and why he, why he drew, and, uh, and that was just one of many. I've actually been doing this as long as I've been making music. Now I think about it because I was making mixtapes really early. I released the first online mixtapes long, long before anyone else. Long before, if you look it up on Wikipedia, I think it says Ghostface did the first one, and I, I was releasing them like four years before that. And so on the mixtapes, I would be rapping and singing, and I would also be chopping up people talking and turning that into songs. So it's just something I've always been doing. I remember when I was making my very first songs on cassette tapes, like copying bits of music to the, from one cassette tape to the other and back again and chopping out the tape and sticking it together with sellotape and stuff. Uh, I would make kind of instrumental mixes and then would, I would read over them. I used to read my homework notes over ambient music and play it when I was going to sleep to sort of program myself with that knowledge. That was how I did revision when I was 15 before I quit school. And uh, so I've just been doing it for as long as I've been doing it. It's just been one of the things I've always done. But then recently over the past year or two, it's basically that's what I've been focusing on is doing that and really nailing that as an art form. Really nailing it as an art form. If I listen back to the early stuff, it was a lot less structured and a lot less polished. Um, so I've been really, that's what I've been doing, is really trying to turn that into an art form, a real, real art form, a real discipline, a real form, a genre, a, a, a style, you know. And uh, yeah, that's why, that's what I've been doing. It's basically, it's just I realized very early that music was an incredibly powerful way of kind of, of, uh, integrating knowledge into oneself. It's a very powerful delivery mechanism, and I, I always recognize that from as long as I can remember. Literally, my first memories are of, of, of that, of knowing that and using that for various, various things. Jaden Hensley says, how many hours have you put into music? I have no idea. They talk about how you need 10,000 hours in something to be a master, right? I have no idea how, how many hours I've put into music, but it's a, it's a lot, man. I mean, I've been doing it like full time pretty much since 2004, 2000, I don't know. I started like producing music quite seriously in around 2000. And I was always making music my whole life when I was a very, very, very little kid. Like I said, I used to make these weird little songs, copying cassettes to other cassettes. I used to make mixtapes for kids and give them out and sell them in school when I was like eight or something or nine. You know, I had a band when I was seven. Um, which was primarily a way of me uh, like getting to hang out with these girls I liked 
So I formed a band and invited them to be in the band. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Night the Bumpf says, any advice for a DJ who wants to start this as a career full time? Uh, well, uh, Jaden says, I'm guessing 20,000 lob, maybe more. I have no idea. I have no idea. Think about it this way. I've been making music pretty much all the time for like 20 years. <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> and I honestly, what's crazy about it is I still feel like I'm just beginning and I'm like barely... I still feel like I've got so, so much to learn. I still almost feel like an amateur in a way, like, which is great. I think that's a good way to feel. Um, I'm certainly nowhere near uh, feeling like I've got, got it nailed or anything. And I think you always need to be learning and you always need to be a student. Uh, you should simultaneously always be learning and uh, always be executing and always be teaching. And uh, I, t I say this a lot, but it's true and I have to remind myself you should always be teaching because if you can't pass on your knowledge, that means you don't understand it yet. If you can't explain something to someone else, that means you can't, you don't really understand it. You know, so teaching is really useful because it forces you to sort of allocate the things that you think you know in such a fashion that you can explain them and then that means you do know them. You should always be executing because uh, it's kind of obvious that some people forget and stop. But you always need to be practicing. You always need to be doing Otherwise, you can get rusty. You can you can forget how to do things. You can the environment around you can change, and so if you stop executing, if you try executing again, the environment might have changed. So what you were doing might not work anymore. Whatever it is you're doing, you know, and you should always be learning because there's always stuff to learn f about. So that's why I still do club DJing, like as a regular thing. I do, I've cut my days. I DJ down now. I'm only doing once a week so I can focus more on making music. But um, it's important to do that one a week. It's important to be out there. It's what Gary Vee calls dirt. You know, practicing the, the gritty thing that got you to where you are and staying in it. It's important that I'm out there seeing what records people are responding to, uh, what how things work on people, what combinations of, of records, what they do to continually be experimenting and trying new things and trying new ways to create ever more transcendent experiences. Last night was a really good one. I did a load of new stuff um, last night and it was really, really cool. I did like a flipping, like a 45 minute, like balls to the wall EDM set for no good reason other than I realized that going in that direction would be the thing that created the most joyous experience in the room at that point. And it really was, it was very, very, very powerful. Uh, but back to your question, my friend, uh, you wanted to know about being a DJ, right? You wanted to become a professional DJ, was that it? I think I've lost the question. I think that's what it was. And, um, you know, if whatever it is you want to do, if you want to do something, what you need to do is do it. You just got to do it, man. And you just got to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, and keep doing it. And um, you got to get out of the bedroom. You got to get out of the bedroom. You got to get into the world. Now these days, uh, paradoxically, you can get into the world without leaving your bedroom. So one thing you could do is live stream yourself, DJ. And uh, if I was beginning DJing now, and I think you know, because it's getting uh, real world DJ experience might not is is you know it's not always the easiest thing. But one thing you can definitely do is DJ in your bedroom to the world on some streaming service that doesn't stream for playing copyrighted material. And there are some, you can find them. There's a thing called Chew TV that you can DJ on and it's got an inbuilt community of people. And if you're playing kind of like rare music, that's not necessarily algorithmified, so you can do that. But you know, there's lots of ways of doing it. Uh, so you could be doing streaming yourself, DJing every day. And that's good because that means you can get the practice in. You need to get those 10,000 hours somehow, you know? So you, you could be DJing like four hour sets every night. And that would be one way of sharpening your skills because when you're DJing in front of people, you know, you can't fuck up. When you're practicing, you could fuck something up. It doesn't matter. No one heard it. Da, 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 da. You know, but when people are paying attention, you, you, you've got to be legit, you know? 
So one thing you could do uh, is broadcast yourself DJing from wherever you live and just do that every day for like a year or something. One thing, you'll and record all your mixes, right? Because some of them will be good and then you can upload those to places and you can start building yourself an audience that way. You know, you can upload your mixes to Mixcloud. They don't need anything, I don't think. Uh, you know, in SoundCloud and places. So you could be you could be broadcasting every night, right? And you could build an audience that way and you could sharpen your skills that way and you could get good. So by the time you're ready to go outside, you've already put in hours and hours and hours and hours. So you're already, you know, good. You've already got to a certain level of competence. And then when you go out into the real world, and that's a completely different thing, because when you're DJing for people and they're right in front of you, can you really see how it's working and how it's not working? You could see, you know, you could play a thing that alienates everybody and they all run off the dance floor you could play something that like you can see right there and then you, the lives are changing in front of you and there's no way of knowing that unless you're right in front of people you know and uh, one way of doing that and I've seen this be successful is just people going out there You, it's and uh, there's one guy he comes out and he sees me and he's just ingratiated himself with the whole club he just comes out he says hi buys the bar guys drinks stuff of that nature and he's like yeah I'm a DJ and uh, he offered his services opening for me he's like you know anytime you need someone to open up for you I'll do it and I'll do it for free I never took him up on that because I at that point I was enjoying my opening sets I was enjoying just doing the full thing taking a club from nothing to everything but uh, he got uh, he got a gig next door just from just sheer perseverance of hanging out hanging out they gave him a shot opening up for someone next door and he nailed it and so they got him back to do another one and he nailed that and now he's got a regular gig and uh, you know that's one way you can do it it's one way you can do it another way you can do it which is how me and Wade started is years ago is just put on your own parties alright so maybe you can't get booked by someone else so book yourself put on a party invite all your homies uh, you know and do it that way. That's how a lot of people started. Uh, I believe Daft, Daft Punk did that. Basement Jacks definitely did that. They used to throw a party in Brixton that became re legendary because it was just so hype. And uh, that's what got them their record deal and shit. People just started hearing about these people throwing these crazy parties in Brixton and doing their own remixes. So that's what they did. They put themselves on. And you know, that's what you need to do these days. You need to put yourself on. You don't got to wait for other people to come along and like recognize your genius because they're probably just not going to. You gotta put yourself on. Alright? So there. So there. Where are we? Pom Yikalakalaka Kyle uh, says, Are you concerned about the narrative that the mainstream media will weave about you once they pick up on you? Especially how the music industry will react to your rejection of their gatekeeping. That's an interesting question. The short answer is no. I'm not concerned. There's no point being concerned about things over which you have no control, and I certainly have no control over how people will respond to me and what I've been doing. I have power over how I respond to other things. You know, and the way I choose to respond to that kind of thing is to not care and not allow it to affect me in any way whatsoever, I would say. So yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You already know, like, it really doesn't matter because you know what some people are going to say before they say it because they're acting purely um, on a script, on a programming axis. When I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, I know that if I go to Thieves Landing, there's going to be certain bandits sat in certain positions doing certain things. And if I shoot them, they will react and walk in a certain way, and the, the other characters to the right of them will appear in a certain way. I know that because they're NPCs. They're non-playable non characters, and they like live their little lives on these predetermined pre accesses, and that's how they behave. And tragically, many, many people are very much in that way. And uh, they're very predictable, therefore. And anyone who's predictable is, is not to be feared or worried about, I would say. You know? 
So yeah, I'm, I'm no factor. No factor, as Jocko Willink would say. No factor. 66 Chapter says, you can drive yourself crazy over things you can never change. That's, that's, like, that's, like, that's like 70% of Twitter. 70% of Twitter. People just driving themselves crazy over shit that they have no, no control over. And uh, it's a sad way to be, man, because there's a lot you do have control over in life. Number one, yourself. You have complete control over yourself. So take control of yourself and become that bad motherfucker you were destined to be. That's what I would say. Graveyard Goons. Shouts out Graveyard Goons. We've got major love for Graveyard Goons over here. Graveyard Goons is just, just some bad motherfuckers. How do we help people while live prank calling them? <laughs> love you, man. Listen to your tunes first thing every morning. <laughs> well, look. The way you help people by prank calling them is by prank calling them. Because what you're doing when you prank call people is you're helping people develop their discernment muscles. You know, because if, if you get taken in by a prank call, then uh, you've got some stuff to learn. And uh, by being taken in by the prank call, you'll learn a valuable lesson. You know, to, uh, to pay attention and not get prank, not get taken in by prank calls. Hey, I had a very realistic spam call this week and it rang me up and it said that my social security had been used by some nefariously and I needed to um, do something otherwise they would cancel my my social security and I thought hmm hmm that sounds like a scam and it was a scam but an earlier version of me would have been taken in by that so somewhere along the way essentially prank calls from scammers uh, alerted me to the nature of such things and now I am impervious so uh, yeah there you go that's how you can help people by prank calling them you prank call them and you prank call them until they can't get pranked anymore my underscore art underscore hero says what advice would you give to DJs who are looking to do it as a full career didn't I just answer a very similar question to that yes I did yes I did uh, but one thing I would say about making becoming a DJ as a full-time career is that DJing is renting out your time and you're never going to get rich renting out your time and just doing a job where all you're doing is renting out your time is dangerous and puts you in a fragile position and you want to be anti-fragile all right so you want to bake something into the DJing that is a way of making money while you sleep as we discussed on the Naval album, you want to be making money while you sleep. You can't do that just DJing, all right? So producing is good because producing means you can make records that get played while you're asleep and that's making money while you sleep. That's one thing. But there's lots of things to do with DJing that are ways to make money not while well, you're not just DJing, you know? It could be a house DJ course or something. It could be, could be uh, mixes or I don't know, whatever. There's remixes. Just make sure you're doing that. Because I've seen people get into DJing and then they're like late 40s or whatever and they're burnt out and functioning, barely functioning alcoholics and they're making a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is per gig and, you know, they've got a week's worth of gigs and that's a good money to live, but it's just that. You're just keeping alive. And it's like, what happens if you get ill? What happens if you break your finger? Uh, what happens if someone comes along and vomits all over your equipment? You know? So... That's one. That's what I would, one thing I would say in relation to be, becoming a full time DJ or any career path which is renting out your time. Be careful and work out an aspect of it that you can work on to make sure that you're uh, making money while you sleep. That's important. That's important. Shouts out to everybody who logged in. Shouts out to everybody listening on the podcast. Uh, Shouts out to YouTube hosting this thing god bless you uh dana says greetings from toronto dana via facebook i forget about facebook but facebook's there and god bless facebook uh as a family with a bad history of financial management what's your best advice on budgeting and your favorite wealth mindsets like the ones you've done with naval wave keep up the great work happy belated to the wife yeah well shout out to the wife the wife has actually been very instrumental in me developing my new wealth mindset. She was pushing on that one early. 
because I had a terrible money mindset back in the day because uh, you know I was raised by socialists. They were just part of being a socialist means you've got a terrible attitude towards money. So yeah, the number one rule, the number one thing I would say is you have to realize that money is not inherently evil and that making money is not evil and making money is not a zero-sum game. The fact that you're making money doesn't mean that other people are suffering or as a result. And I say this because I used to believe that because I was taught that. So the first thing is you have to remove that. You have to remove the poisonous mind virus that money is inherently bad and making it is bad and hurting other people. It's just untrue. It's untrue. We know this from the data. All you have to do is look at the past hundred years and look at what's happened. And uh, you can see that people have been pulled out of poverty at a crazy rate. Uh, what was the stat? Like the average wealth of people in Africa is now the same as it was in the West in the 60s, I believe. You know. Uh, anyway, you know, you can go you can go look all this stuff up. It's undeniable that people are getting wealthier all over the world. Uh, the standard of living for the average person now, the average, like the average low-end person, is greater than it was for the richest person a couple hundred years ago. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's the first thing you need to fix. That if you haven't got that fixed, it doesn't matter what you do, you will always, you'll always fail. You'll always fail. And then the second thing is, you know, always live below your means. That's the very, very simple one. But again, it's the thing that it seems that the majority of people in the world today, certainly the Western world, uh, aren't doing. People are maxing out credit cards and people are buying unnecessary stuff and doing unnecessary things. And, uh, you know, and it's this, like, so-called wealthy people are doing this. There's so-called wealthy people who have maxed out all of their their um, borrowing streams and are in credibly, credibly precarious positions. And what that means is that you are trapped. You are not free. The purpose of wealth, if the purpose of wealth, which I believe it is, is freedom, you're not wealthy if you trap yourself, i.e. You're, you live in a mansion and your mortgage payments are, like, fifty thousand dollars a month or something when what you could have done is like you know buy a small place and just live in that you know uh, this is something that rappers do all the time uh, there's a posh building by my studio and uh, it's kind of like a hotel that people live in it's really really expensive like thousands and thousands and ten thousand dollars a month or something and uh, little Zan got in there. As soon as he had a YouTube hit, he moved into that building. And I recognized the building because I saw where his videos, he was, he was in there stunting on the roof. And he just had one YouTube video blow up. Like he didn't even have like a bunch of records on, on Spotify or anything. And he was already plowing tens of thousands of dollars into an apartment. He could have rented somewhere for like, you know, a fraction of that and saved that money. But he didn't. And I don't know what his position is now, but I would suspect it's precarious. It's precarious. I've seen so many musicians and people of that nature come and go during my career who've blown up and then they've spunked all that money before, you know, before they'd even sort of uh, built a sustainable career. And, you know, now they're, well, now they don't have any money. And, the, and now their bands aren't popping anymore and now people don't give a crap about them anymore and now they've, they're having to go and do things that they would rather not. And it's not necessary, you know, it's not necessary. So anyway, that was a very long-winded way of saying don't spend beyond your means, live below your means and the further below your means you live, the more freedom you have. And this is something we all have to keep reminding ourselves of. I certainly do. You know, it's very tempting. You're like, ooh, I could, I really need a new computer or I really need this hard drive or whatever it is. But um, I want to get that now. But don't get it now. Get it once you've saved. Save, brothers and sisters. That's what you should do. Uh, you know, it's one way of saving the world. It's saving for yourself and therefore saving yourself. Shouts out to... 
uh, Gabriel, who says, Elon Musk made a billion dollars off of PayPal, and now he's saving the planet. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, Tristan says, greetings from New York City. Do you accept suggestions slash recommendations for meaning wave sample subjects? Yes, of course. Yes. Suggestions is a great way of putting it. I had a chick come up to me in the club last night. She goes, do you take requests? I says, no, but I'll hear your smart suggestion. And uh, she suggested something and it was a good suggestion. So yeah, that's one thing, you know, never be too proud to take suggestions from the crowd. Ooh, that rhymed. Ooh, that's a good one. Never be too proud to take suggestions from the crowd. Nice, and put that on a t-shirt. And it's easy to do that. You'd be all gassed up, like, how dare you come to me? I am superstar DJ Akira the Dumb. How dare you request something of me? But sometimes people have good ideas that you wouldn't have thought of. That happened like four times last night. And I, I, I forget sometimes, and sometimes I get, I get proud. I'm like, no, I don't take goddamn requests. How dare you talk to me? Can you not see? What a wonderful time everyone is having. Obviously, I know what I'm doing, God damn it. But, you know, listen, you should pay attention to the crowd, man, because sometimes the crowd knows stuff that you don't. So, anyway, the answer to that question is yes. You go to Discord, and uh, there's a channel in there, and I think it's probably called Suggestions. And leave suggestions in there. And I look at that every now and again, and I, and I get, get inspiration from it. And I've done a bunch of stuff that was in there. All right? Uh, Gabriel says, have you checked out John Vivaki? Yeah, of course, yeah, of course, of course, of course. course. Uh, he's got this really dope uh, lecture series called The Meaning Crisis that I believe is like on number 39 now and they're all an hour long. <laughs> and uh, they're all amazing. They're fantastic. They're very, 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 very good. Very, very interesting. And uh, he's trying to create some kind of theory of everything like Einstein did with relation to the topic of meaning, which is obviously, you know, something we're interested in over here. So yeah, I've been listening to those. I listen to them when I scoot, I e-scoot sometimes back from my studio in downtown Los Angeles to the, the penthouse here in West Hollywood. And I listen to that. And I listen to that. And uh, I'm presuming you're wondering when there's going to be music coming that's, that's from that. And all I can say is that, yes, it's definitely something I've been keeping notes on. And there's some great stuff in there. Now, the challenge with John, with uh, Vivaki, and the meaning thing, <laughs> the meaning crisis, well, as we've ascertained, is that there's, there's like 40 hours of stuff, all right? So turning that into little three, four minute songs, that's the challenge. Because he says himself, what he's doing in turning it into one hour lectures, that's taking like hundreds of hours worth of thousands of ideas of of worth of ideas and stuff and condensing condensing that down into hour long lectures so then my job is condensing that yet further and uh, that's a very difficult thing and it's a very exciting thing and uh, yeah so yeah definitely I love that guy and I'm really enjoying that series really enjoying that series uh, Gabrielle says, I find it goes really well with JP's overall message. Yeah, it really, it does. It's very complimentary. It's like going deep. It's going deeper into a lot of those ideas is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm all about it. And he also shares my opinion on uh, the natural born cyborg idea of humans, that we're just naturally cyborgs. I know a lot of people are concerned about the idea of transhumanism and rightly so. But I, I've, I feel and I've always felt that we're, we are, that's what we are anyway. And uh, ever since we picked up a rock and smashed someone else over the head with that rock, that was technology and we've been cyborgs ever since. And we're full-blown cyborgs now. The mobile phone is like, if you have one of these, you're a cyborg. You're, you're a cyborg. You know, you, like it's, it's touching you all the time. It's an extra brain. It gives you all these crazy superpowers. You're already a cyborg. You know, and um, and very soon these things will live within us, and that's just that's just what's going to happen, and that's just it. And you could go live up a mountain if you want, and you're very welcome to. But if you're going to engage in humanity going forward, part of that involves being a cyborg. I think there's no way around it. Yikes! Yikes! Now, where are we, Donna? Now we answered your question, Donna, and thank you for it. 
JB Kruger, would you consider Christwave? Yeah, a couple of Ask Akira's ago, I suggested Christwave. Someone said, what would be the ultimate wave if you could wave someone dead or alive? And I said, Christwave. Yes, Christwave. So yes, I would consider Christwave. I've got to find someone who sounds good as Jesus. The right Jesus voice. I wonder who that would be. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting, I just had an idea. I just had an idea. Someone else asked, Mr. Magic's also asking about a wave. Someone else has asked about this before as well. He'd like to see some Elliot Hulse wave. And uh, he's asking what I think about Elliot Hulse. And I haven't checked in on Elliot Hulse since I was training to be a DJ. In 2013, I was getting ready to emigrate to America and I was living in Wales, running on the beach every day and training to be a DJ full time. And uh, I was listening to a bunch of Elliot Hulse videos because I was doing a lot of fitness and stuff. And he was really good. I learned a bunch of stuff from him. I haven't checked in on him lately though, so I, I should. And I will. I will. Orinoco Wellington in the chat says, we are Borg. <laughs> We're kind of going in that direction, for good or real. Explicitly, explicitly, because we're all connected anyway. We're all connected anyway. We're all, we're all of the same thing. And we're all connected in, in quite explicit ways. Like, you know, when enough of us learn how to do something, everyone else does. And uh, we're definitely all connected. Explicitly and, and also metaphorically. And uh, the exp the, the, an extra level of explicit communication was added with the internet. And an extra level will be added once we're all interfaced with the internet all the time. Internally, which is coming for good or ill. El Doggo, how influenced are you by Young and would you ever make Young wave? Although I don't blame you if you didn't, the old interviews plus his accent make his speech a bit obscure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is something we've talked about before. Uh, a Young wave is definitely something that's happening. And uh, I think the first one's called Forever Young, obviously. And, uh, you know, Young is a massively influential figure as he casts a giant shadow over the world. And his ideas pop up in my life quite a lot. Although, uh, truthfully, I didn't really look into him much until Peterson. Although I was aware of his work prior to that, probably through Joseph Campbell and people like that. But yeah, it's certainly over the past few years, I've, I've been a lot more influenced by it. And it's something that is coming up in the Meaning Wave universe. Yes, it is. Gabriel says, I think Bottleneck right now is a platform that, real nails, that really nails community building of ideas. Yeah, and I think that this is, this is certainly something that ThinkSpot seems like it could be good for. ThinkSpot being Peterson's new platform. And uh, yeah, I think that could be good. Because that's, that's a big focus of that. So we shall see anyway. And more about that. More about that coming up next week. Gregory says, uh, have you done the self-authoring suite? Uh, yeah, I have. Well, no, I haven't finished it. I started it. So I've done a bit of it. I've been using it for um, writing down old memories that make me cry. You know, just getting rid of them. So I've done a couple of those. Done a couple of those. I think my wife has gone deeper on it than I have. Um, yeah. Sam White says, Akira Aurelis. Hey, that's a good name. I'm going to add that to my Rolodex of names. I like that one. I like that one. It's also fitting given the nature of today's thumbnail. When can we expect some Wes Watson wave? You know you can't resist the alliteration. Uh, I am a sucker for alliteration. I'll give you that. I don't think I've heard Wes Watson. So drop something in the suggestion channel and I'll check it out. Catherine says, have you checked out anything from Cyberpunk 77, the upcoming video game? I'm worried the message of the future is going to be too pessimistic, but I like their ideas of technologically modified humans. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm uh, kind of psyched about that game. I basically, I'm more interested in that game than any other since Red Dead. And um, did you see little Nas X's new video? It's basically Cyberpunk 77. It's directed by the genius Mike Diva who's a genius and I'm, pr I'm convinced that someone giving Mike Diva like 60 million bucks would save the movie industry and I honestly think Mike Diva is going to be a really important figure going forward I think he already has been but 
he's going to be a really huge, huge figure in the uh, in the world of visual stuff. And uh, yeah, anyway, he directed the new Little Nas X video, and Little Nas X did Old Town Road, and he had that whole cowboy aesthetic, and that was basically inspired by Red Dead. He was playing Red Dead. He made a cowboy song. He uploaded a music video that was just like Red Dead footage, which is something I did in 2012, because uh, you know I've been in, I've been crooked I've been in the future. But anyway, uh, he pivoted from that on his new single to going cyber full blown cyberpunk 77 with the Mike Diva video that's beautiful and brilliant. But I was predicting a shift into that world, and uh, and it's right on time. It's coming along. And uh, I think what's going to happen, yeah, I've, I've spoke about this, you know, I'm not interested in Black Mirror, because I'm not interested in any negative, dystopian, like horror stories about the future. I think we've had enough of those. And I don't think they worked. If they were supposed to scare us off of doing that, it didn't work. We, we made all that stuff come true. So I think we need more hopeful future stories. I think Star Trek Next Generation is a good template for how that might work. And I want more hopeful, useful stories. And I think that Cyberpunk 77 might actually deliver on that because Cyberpunk 77 is going to have to have uh, an online version. So outside of the single player story, it's going to have to have an online that just works going forward. And uh, if you're going to have something that works going forward, it's got to be something that works by definition. So I think Cyberpunk 2077 has got a potential for creating stories about situations that work and aren't just fully full-blown horror story negativity i think there's a possibility there so i'm excited for that because i think that we're moving in a direction where people are just the market is going to be demanding that and uh the corporations are currently trying to sell us a bunch of stuff a bunch of horrible ideas that nobody wants and i think the market will course correct that um, so we shall see, we shall see. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm totally into Cyberpunk 2077. Totally into that. Uh, two more Vs. Shouts out to two more Vs. He's done some really good stuff on the forthcoming JVP record. Like some really cool shit. I'm excited for you all to hear. It says, what's expressed this idea that everyone, even the most elaborate guru, needs something like a bad habit to grind him in reality? If you believe that to be true, what would be yours? Red Dead Online, Red Dead Online, that's mine. Red Dead Online and also uh, YouTube videos about uh, culture war stuff, maybe. I would say that I watch a few too many YouTube videos about culture war stuff, probably. I sometimes when I'm watching those videos or listening to them while I'm moving around, which is how I actually do it. So I'm doing useful shit like getting to the studio, but it's like, could be listening to some, you know, Marcus Aurelius compilation right now, but I'm listening to a guy bitch about Star Wars. <laughs> but what that stuff does is keep me in touch with culture, and it's important to be in touch with culture and not know what's going on. I had a conversation yesterday, and I was, I'm just really versed on all that stuff, and the person I was talking to was quite shocked by how much I knew about that, and it ended up being very useful that I knew about that stuff in helping him to understand some stuff about an area he was looking into. So anyway, yeah, Red Dead Redemption Online, which I play when I get in from DJing. And um, I was really looking forward to playing Red Dead. There's, there's been an update. You can now do roles. You can be a trader and a bounty collector and shit like that. You basically live in the Old West and you can hunt. I'm just doing the trader role, man. I'm just hunting. I'm just hunting and then uh, turning the pelts into like rugs and shit and then selling those to people in town <laughs> that's fucking it <laughs> and I fucking love it I love it it brings me great joy so yeah that's my uh, Xhammer13 4 hey you bad motherfucker says what's your opinion on Ghost in the Shell well I love the original Ghost in the Shell it's one of my favourites from back in the day and I haven't seen the movie uh, I haven't seen the movie although everyone being everyone dogpiling Scarlett Johansson these days is making me want to watch it so maybe I will uh, Gabriel Lantis says I have a strong feeling Avengers is going to tank well there isn't another Avengers movie for like three years is there? you mean the MCU he says what's going to happen without the superhero movies dominating the industry I think they're going to keep dominating for a while 
But it's like westerns, you know, westerns at one point were the, were, that was the genre of movie that people watched. And that's how we told our stories. And then they faded and other things came in. We're currently telling stories via the medium of superheroes because finally the people like Jack Kirby and uh, Grant Morrison for years they could tell stories in comics that were untellable in other mediums because comics is a story is a visual medium so the visuals are there for you you don't have to imagine them but you can draw whatever you can imagine you know so people with big imaginations were, were able to create worlds that you basically couldn't tell those stories anywhere else and then special effects got so good that you could start to do that in movies so then superhero movies started getting big but what's happened now is for a while they were telling archetypical stories in superhero movies they were telling the the ancient archetypical stories but now they're stopping doing that because now they've got committees saying you need to do this and do that and do this and do that and we need to see every single kind of potential human represented so that we can sell it to all of those people and we can sell it in all these different territories and uh and uh for political reasons of reasons of ideology we need to change things and tell different things and those things are more important than the stories that's what they're fucking up they're fucking up because the stories are not the most important thing now and the reason those archetypical stories lasted for so long is because they're archetypical and that they lasted for so long and these new stories they're telling they're not going to last for so long because they're propaganda and propaganda doesn't last What's up, Hercules? Hercules is here. Hi, Hercules. What's going on? What's going Hi. on? Hey. Hey. I've been in a lot of um, creepy Minecraft maps. You've been in creepy Minecraft maps? Yeah, because the thing my mum got me allows you to put mods in your world and also cool, um, like, um, customised worlds that people, that grown-ups made with loads of command blocks and stuff. Cool. And I've been in a baldy one, a not that scary body one, a actual scary one that actually jump scares you like it actually does in the game. Yeah. And also a bendy world. Okay. Of, of chapter three of Bendy Onion Machine. And I've also was trying to go in a granny world. But it don't go in granny world. But it kicked me out. Granny's really times. creepy. If you guys don't know who granny is, granny is like a creepy product of the internet. There's a lot of stuff that like little kids like Hercules are into is stuff that was invented on message boards like Slenderman and things like that or like underground games like Bendy and the Ink Machine that just blew up and it's been all this quite dark stuff because we've been going through this dark period as I talk about oscillating from the, the dark to the psychedelic and we're about to hit peak dark and the biggest thing for kids these days is horror games, right? Little kids love horror games right now. What have you got? Uh. I've got, oh, I've got Minecraft, but that's kind Minecraft's of... Minecraft's not, Minecraft's nice, but so you, you, what's Five Nights at Freddy's, for example? That's really big. Yeah, and I watch people play it. That's a horror game about some evil cybernetic toys that come alive. Uh, toys, robots. Robots, okay. Yeah, the Benny and the Ink Machine, which is basically a revenge story about the spirit of Mickey Mouse, like, wreaking evil, inky vengeance on Hollywood. It's very, very, very te contemporary. It's very interesting that that blew up now. Anyway, what's up, Herc? What are you I'm doing? I'm getting it for my seventh birthday. Yes, you're getting it for CA7, maybe. I think you might be interested in other things by then, but we'll see. Hercules wants to drop an emoji in the chat. Let's have an emoji in the chat from Hercules. Hey, Herc, did you enjoy holiday? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. What was your favourite thing about holiday? Um, I just liked the fire. The fire was good, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you you spent a lot of time in the you spent a lot of time swimming. You made lots of friends. All right, these are your emojis, right? Yep. Okay, let's Send post them. these. Very nice. Hercules just posted some emojis in the chat. Drop some emojis in the chat if you're feeling Hercules over here. Caroline says, "I don't want to know what Granny is." No, you don't. Granny's just creepy. <laughs> uh, Diverting Tale says, "We went from the Dark Knight." To fun and happy Marvel, which ended with a darker story in Endgame. And during that time, everybody hated dark superhero movies, but people are hyped for the Joker now. <laughs> well, I would actually say that the whole period has been dark. You know, the Marvel movies were more based on the Ultimates, 
which was quite a dark vision of the superheroes. It, that, like compared to the Dark Knight, the Marvel, the Marvel movies were certainly lighter, and they were lighter in tone, and people told jokes. But really, they were doing the "what if superheroes were real," sort of dark, real story. When I say from light to dark, by the way, it's more like from uh, what another way of looking at it is from from cosmic to mm. earth. So the shift also, it's about things becoming to do with material stuff, materialism, like people stopped being interested in like cosmic conspiracies and aliens and stuff. And it all got to do with people moaning about feminism and like worrying about Islam and things of that nature. And it's going back to the cosmic again now. And the superhero movies we had in this time Dad. were based around an earthly vision and they're going back into the cosmic in a big way. What's up, Hercules? Um, there's also another horror game, but it's not really a horror game. Oh, yeah? It's not a horror game, no. Okay, what is it? It's, um, it's a Minecraft thing. What? Um, it's called SCPs. What's that? And it's a company that's called SCPs Foundation. It has, like, creepy, like, things, the animals that are from space, and they have blood on their hands, and they don't like people to look at their face, and they run back at you. What? If they do. Okay. That sounds very creepy. I don't know what the sound of that. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Here's my thoughts. I don't think that the superhero movie has actually yet peaked. I don't think that the ultimate superhero movie has been made. And I think there's going to be a lot more experimentation within the genre of superhero movie before it dies. Um, as far as the MCU is concerned, I'm not interested in anything they're doing going forward, I don't think. And I don't mean that like vindictively. I just think I'm like, I'm just not interested in any of the things that they've got coming up. Personally, none of it interests me. But uh, I do think that the great, the ultimate superhero story has yet to be told in a movie. I think the closest we got might be amazing. Might be sorry, uh, Spider-Man Two, maybe. I think that came the closest. But I don't think we've. Um, I don't think we've, we've done it yet. So anyway, uh, yes. Shouts out to. Uh, Oh yeah, shout out, yeah. If anyone's got a question for Hercules, drop a question in the chat. Hercules will answer a question. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Diverting Tales, by the way. Diverting Tales, I've said this before, but he's got really good Instagram that breaks down uh, comic book related stuff really well, like what stories, comics themselves, movies, themes, things of that nature. It's a really great account, and I recommend it highly. Uh, Gabrielle Lancer says, yeah, that's what I mean regarding MCU's upcoming stuff being uninteresting. Yeah, I'm just not interested in any of it. I'm not interested in um, these TV shows. I'm not interested in second generation gender swaps of characters. What it's just boring. Like? I would what rather some new characters. With? What am I interested in? Yeah. It's a good question, Hercules. I'm interested in the new stories that are going to be told by people of your generation. And Generation Z. Like creepy things. Well, we'll see whatever you guys come up with. I'm interested in some new stories, some new characters, some new takes on the archetypical stories. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in subversions of the archetypical stories because it's boring. I like, you know, and that, what, what I mean by that is when they go, when a story subverts, it's when they do something that you're not expecting but just because you're not expecting it. Dad, someone wanted to give us $10. Yeah, they did. That was the Accidental Poet, who's got one of the premier music channels on YouTube. So thank you, Accidental Poet. Says, haven't been able to catch and ask Akira live in a minute, just supporting my man Akira. Well, thank you very much, you bad MF, you. And I continue to enjoy your channel and the work you do there. Uh, so yeah, shouts out to the Accidental Poet. Everyone check out the Accidental Poet YouTube channel. It is a great curation of wave music on there. Gregory says, Hercules, what's your favorite food? Oh, that's hard. Because <laughs> when uh, Jocko's fan said that, um, he was like, hmm, like me right now. Yeah, so what's your um, answer? What's your truthful answer? What was the first thing you thought of? Is it a vegetable, a candy, or what is it? It's up to you. Um, Just what's your favorite food? Um, what do you enjoy to eat the most? Burgers with lettuce. There you go. Cheeseburgers with lettuce. Cheeseburgers with lettuce. That's, for, that's good. That's good. All right, boom. Uh, Strength Odyssey says, 
You made me a real boy, Akira. Your music is too much, too complex. Well, what I would say to that, my friend, is just go at your own speed. You know? And if there's something that uh, is creating... Oh, Hercules is off. Thank you, Hercules. Hi. I'll see you in a bit. If something's causing trouble or creating friction, step away from it and uh, go into something else. And um, actually, it helps... We're going to have to do a timeline of this. It helps to do the material in sequence because I've been doing it in such a fashion that it's kind of like one project will lay a foundation that another project will then build upon. So if you listen to things backwards, it might be that like uh, some things don't make sense perhaps in the way that they might better make sense if you listened in order. But uh, if there's ever anything that's causing you concern, hop in the Discord and there's a great community in the Discord of people all helping each other out and answering each other's questions and helping each other become the best versions of them. So get into that Discord and there's a wonderful community there that will help you become the you that you are destined to be. Shouts out to Theo, the Oya, sorry. Thank you for the super chat. Says it's a beautiful day to be alive. You're damn straight, bucko. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Damn straight, bucko. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Uh, yeah. Couple more questions to get through. If you got anything you really need to know, drop it in the chat right now. Jeffrey Stewart, are you still riding the hyperproductivity wave? How has your idea and implementation of hyperproductivity changed through your experiment? Oh shit, man. I think that's a whole other podcast. Can you ask that again? Do me a favor and ask that again and we'll I'll I'll ask I'll answer that in a big way next time. But um but the short answer is yes, still riding the hyperproductivity wave. And uh, the implementation has definitely changed in lots of ways. It's very much a case of refining the process as one goes along, checking in, see what's working, see what could work better, see what you could do to make things more optimal and things of that nature. But yeah, let's, we'll talk about that more deeply next time because uh, we're, we're at the end right now. Uh, Multiverse Media Space, you bad man. Will you be DJing anywhere September 26th? October 2nd, I want to get my Jocko Mini Wave shirt signed and meet the Don himself if possible. Um, what you should do is keep an eye on the uh, on my website, akiradadon.com, and on my Facebook, I believe, I have gig listings. So I'll try and let you know what's going on there. Uh, let me just check my calendar right now. See what's going on at that time period. Um, what did you, what was it? September 26th to October 2nd. Uh, all right, I believe on the 28th of September, I'm going to be at No Vacancy doing a club DJ set. So come down there and uh, you can say hi and hang out and uh, get whatever you want signed. How about that? That's what I would say. Uh, yeah, so yeah, thank you. Thanks everybody who's been here. Thank you everyone who is here. Thank you everyone who continues to be here. Uh, have you ever talked to the mushroom in the way McKenna said he did? Is two more visas question? That's a good question. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. I had a lot of conversations with the mushroom around uh, 99 to 2001 for a couple of years. I spent a good couple of years communicating with that motherfucker. Yeah. No way. Adrian Wettergren says 44.4k subs, 44 viewers. Holy shit. I only say that because I've been getting 44444 4, 4, 4 number sequences all week, all over the place. Loads of them. All over the place. To a really ridiculous degree. And uh, yeah, my wife kind of pays attention to that sort of thing. And she'd been noticing it. So that's crazy. That's crazy. Well done. Strength Odyssey says, you come into Vancouver, Canada, book him and he will come. As soon as someone invites me, I'm there. All right. Um, yeah, definitely. Because what's going on right now is we're in the building stage and I'm focusing on making music and making material and building the audience to such a point that then we can go on tour and there'll be enough people and more than enough people and increasingly vast amounts of people and then we can play stadiums and do amazing, vast uh, experiences that will change the lives of everybody in attendance. I'm very much looking forward to that. 
Jaden says 444 means synchronicities will start happening, apparently. Well, they already do. I live in a world of synchronicity. And my day-to-day -day life is, very, is that of ridiculous synchronicity. But certainly I've been getting shitloads of fours. I had a, a four, I think I had like a five four sequence yesterday. I just had one today. Uh, Gabrielle says, sorry, Caroline says four is the number of being. Okay, that's good. Well, we're, well that's what we're doing here. We're being. We're actively being. Uh, yeah. Anyway, big, uh, yeah, I've got to get out of here. It's, it's my wife's birthday weekend. And uh, I've also got lots more work to do. We're going to be doing another stream today. It's Sunday. We normally do these on Saturday, but we were on holiday yesterday, so we couldn't. Uh, but we did it today because, you know, consistency is key. And I love hanging out with you guys. Uh, yeah, so later on tonight, we'll be doing the live stream DJ set. So check back for that. Check back to that. Time right now. Holy fuck, says Strength Odyssey. Oh my god, it's 4.44. <laughs> It's 4.44 with 44,444 subs. What's up, Hercules? We're having a magical time over here. Are you going? Yeah, we're going. Can we're logging off right now. Do you want to say goodbye, Sophia? Goodbye. Yeah, we're going. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We'll be, uh, we'll be back later having some magical experiences because that's what we do. Magical stuff. Magical times. Hit all of these four at once, would you? Can you do that? Um, um, Use both hands. Okay. Put the controller down. You ready? Yeah, 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 there we go. Oh, and it's episode 44 as well. <laughs> Alright. Alright, thanks, Hercules. So, this was episode 44 of Ask Akira um, with 44,444 subs. And we had 44 simultaneous viewers at one point, apparently. And uh, what a magical thing. Caroline says, I'll be listening later while I finish up painting. Thanks for all you do. And thanks for using my art as your thumbnail. Yo, I really love the picture. I thought it was wonderful. So uh, thank you very much for making that. Shouts out to everyone who sends in art. Shouts out to Elizabeth Breitweiser, uh, who is an amazing artist and just dropped a wave and a heart in the chat. Thank you to you. Uh, check out the Indiegogo that Elizabeth and Mitch are doing. Uh, check out their stuff. Uh, they have got uh, Red Rooster coming out and they've got like a whole series of really ill, like heroic looking adventure comics that seem to range between the superhero and the Western genres and look really dope. And they're, they're building their own universe and I've got mad respect for everyone building their own universes. And that's what they're doing. They're creating their own world away from the uh, dying mainstream comic industry, which is just murdering itself inexplicably, and it's a really miserable thing to observe. So rather than sitting around bitching, what they're doing is making their own universe, making their own characters and telling their own stories. And that's what I think everyone should be doing, everyone who certainly Dad, has the ability on, to. Go. All right, we're going, Herky. We're going, sorry, good point, I was deviating. Anyway, shout out to everyone building their own universe. Shout out to everyone helping, a, helping us to build this universe, the Meaning Wave universe. And shout out to everyone who's actively engaging in utilizing the historically unimaginable opportunity that we have right now here at the peak of recorded human civilization. Splash, splash. I'm getting out of here. Uh, anyone, who, some, Gregory says, accident poet wants to sync up with you, mate. Anyone who wants to sync up with the Don, just hit me up, man. Send me an email, send me a Wait, DM, whatever it is. Thank you, Hercules. That's us done. Yeah! Bye.